Welcome back everybody. So today I'm going on a tour, a cave tour of Woogie Hole Caves. I have not been here since I was a kid. It's only about an hour away from me, just over an hour. Generally really, really looking forward to this. I'm in the Mendips and I'm just gonna do some filming, hopefully on the way around. It is like a guided tour. So nothing like what me and Richard have done beforehand, but generally really looking forward to this. I'm just gonna show you some of the view and what's around. So, let's get into it. So down there, there's a load of dinosaurs. See them? Yeah. I mean, this is ideal for kids, to be fair. Um, my next tour is not until half past one, I think. That's the entrance to the caves, just in there. There are ghost stories attached to this place and witches. Uh, which I'll do a little bit of history on that before we get into the tour. But how cool is this? It's like 22 quid for the tour and you can go into any of the attractions, includes this one. But you can just see all the dinosaurs. So just before we get into this tour of these caves, I did say I was going to do a history part. But it came apparent because it's a guided tour, the guide that was showing us around the first half gave quite a fair bit of history, so I didn't need to do it. So on that note, I hope everyone enjoys the video. See you later all. Bye-bye. My name is Troy, I'll be your tour guide for the day. Just a few safety things I need to go over before you go any deeper into the cave. So it is wet and slippery in here, just be careful, especially on our stairs, we have some quite steep stairs, be a bit extra careful on those. There are quite a few low hanging rocks where all of you will need to duck, so watch the ceiling and mind your heads. And then you can take as many photographs as you like, just please no flash photography, because it does disturb our bats. Follow me. Welcome to the Goat Herder. Um, this is one of the first chambers they ever discovered in this cave. The cave is about a million years old and was carved out by the River Axe. It's actually one of the youngest caves in Britain. Most caves normally take about 100 to 200 million years to form. And the reason this one was able to be formed so quickly um, is because of the type of stone that we've got here. So we've got a combination of sandstone and limestone, and together they form something that's called Dolmitic conglomerate, or some people call it pudding stone um, in Britain. It kind of looks like Christmas pudding. You can see it on the back wall there, with the light shining on the rock. That's what makes them Sort of like Christmas pudding, not really. Um, <laughs> but essentially, instead of one hard slab of rock, there's two separate rocks that have kind of been cemented together to make it a very soft rock. Or at least it's a lot easier for water to cover or something like that. And it would be a solid slab of limestone or sandstone. Uh, this is also the chamber where the legend of the Wookiee Witch began. So in the 1400s, a gentleman excavated into this chamber. He found the bones of a woman dating back about a thousand years. Uh, you can actually see, see those bones in the Wells Museum. He found something called an Abbabasta Hall, which is essentially a naturally forming crystal ball. And then he made a lot of assumptions. A uh, dead woman in a cave with a crystal ball, which you must be a witch. And then the legend is kind of broken from there. Uh, so that's the true part. And then the legend itself goes like this, about a thousand years ago a woman lived in these caves, anything bad that happened in the village below was blamed on her, people went missing, she was blamed, if crops died she was blamed. Eventually the villagers got fed up and they decided to send a priest from Gatwick Abbey to exorcise the witch from the caves, Father Bernard. He came into this chamber and had a big argument with the witch, causing her to flee down the passageway that we call Hell's Ladder. Now normally if you were a bigger tour group, um, I would tell you it was that stairwell which we're about to go down. But we actually blew that out for the public and because we're a bit smaller I can show you the original health ladder um, which is actually up there, down that dark abyss. Um, and if you go up there, it takes you to a cylindrical cave that goes down like a chute and there's jagged rocks that stick out the side like a spiral staircase that goes all the way down. Um, so that's the original health ladder. But we're going to go down health ladder 2.0.
down hell back into this chamber, being chased by the priest. And then the witch will seek to burn the priest's torch out so you can hear anything. So you couldn't see anything. All you can hear was the drop of the water from the river below. They walked down the street, you hear the sound, pulled up the silver chalice, left the water, and then splashed it on the table to the other screen. And that screen was the witch being turned to stone. Big ears, turned to stone, walked the door, got a very big head, uh, hit people back then, that big head. <laughs> It's a lot easier to see close to the stairs than there. Uh, and we also managed to turn a daughter's stone, which is on the floor just behind you guys, illuminated by the light there. Uh, can anyone tell me what the time of the is? 70 meters for every 1,000 years. You can actually take back another 10,000 bricks completely from the ceiling. Um, and then just to the right back, illuminated by the blue light and the water there, we have a formation that we call St. Michael's Mount. If any of you have ever seen the islands in Michael's Mount, it does have a striking resemblance to that rock. If not, it's just a pretty little rock. And then to the right back again, we have another standing mine that we call the Beehive. Uh, this big mountain here. For a more modern take on this one, a lot of people, lots of people like to put this one in Shabbat Lahat. <laughs> uh, the reason you yeah. can see the Beehive though is because it's full of little insects. They live in there, like a beehive. Right, cool. Uh, the river to my left, your right, is the River Axe. This is not a still body of water. It flows left to right at a rate of about 50 million litres of water a day. It is the river that carved out the entire cave system. Every body of water you're going to see in the cave today is all part of the same river, connected by a giant subterranean network under the rock. Follow me now. Mind your head What, Trump is doing back in country, eh? Okay. Welcome to Chamber 2 of the Great Hall. Uh, this is my personal favourite chamber. This chamber has the most character in my opinion. This chamber has been through a lot. Uh, back in Victoria time, we used to use this chamber a lot for ballroom dancing. We used to like having a lot of parties down here and find a lot of um, antique wine bottles and things that they left in here. We've also found little cannibals in this chamber, um, which used to be used with your hand up cannons. Um, which is quite interesting. And the running theory of that is that uh, people used to come in here with little hand up cannons to shoot them at the walls of the roof to try and take the formations over them, or just rip it apart. And you can see on the roof higher there, there are a lot of broken formations, which is very unusual for the caves. Um, it's very hard to break those without quite a lot of force. So that's why the cannibal theory is. Um, this chamber is also home to some beautiful formations. Just above your head, you'll notice these tiny little straw-like things hanging from the ceiling. And these are called salicylic straws. They're called straws because they're completely hollow. You snap one off and use it as a straw. The way that they're formed is the water drop is so tightly sucked into the roof, it actually falls so slowly it gives the house set enough time to form round it like a ring as it falls, creating a straw shape. Um, you might have noticed there's a lot of black all over the walls in our cave. Black is actually not a natural colour to have on cave walls. Um, normally caves would be white and grey, much more sort of vibrant colour. But it's actually our fault that our caves are so black. So back in the day, before they installed electricity in the cave, what the guys used to do is bring a mixture of paraffin and oil, splash it on the rocks in places like this here, and then set it on fire. So imagine you're in pitch black, and then suddenly the entire cavern gets illuminated by a giant fire on the wall. It would have been pretty awesome. But it resulted in a lot of soot damage in our caves, which is why the caves are so black. Um, a spot I do like to point out is the black stains on the wall at the back there. The reason I point that black stains out specifically is because of the white stuff that's growing on top. So that is actually the calcite growing back over the soot damage. If you give the cave back another 10, maybe 15,000 years, there won't be any soot damage in there anymore. Um, it will grow back over itself. It's almost like it's living, sort of healing itself. So it grows. This chamber is 22 metres tall. It's about the height of the nave it was the cathedral. For a little bit of perspective as to how deep we are on the ground, if you took this chamber and you stacked three more of this chamber on top of this chamber, the top of the fourth chamber would be the surface. So we're about 80 metres down now. Um, and when we walk down these stairs and just look up at the bottom, uh, you can really sort of get an idea as to how deep that is.
my favourite cake. Yeah, what's So that was me thinking I was going to do a history video on it. I don't actually have to because the tour guy did it, so it's just a walk around. I am loving it. Not quite like the other mines. So, here we go. since I was a kid. So this is pretty cool right now. Love it. That's a pretty steep drop right over me. You can't see that through the camera, but that's a pretty steep drop. Doing well, doing well. Doing 
doing well, especially because I don't like height. I'm duck down, I'm gonna duck down, oh my god, that's a drop, that's a drop, that's a drop, that's a drop, that's a drop. Holy shit, that's a drop. Oh, oh, that's a drop. Shit. Oh, holy shit, the bad. Oh. I didn't think I'm gonna turn my camera off. I'm doing well, I'm doing well at height. Doing well at height. Doing well at height. So worth a ghost hunt in this place. So worth a ghost hunt. How are you going to a pool of water? There's more. Oh no, it's the end. I love that. Absolutely love that. Wow, everybody, I thought that was absolutely amazing. I really did. And now we come. See the dinosaurs. That's just amazing. It's just so epic. So, so epic. Okay, so we're going to go and see the dinosaurs now. How can you just not love that, eh? Look at it. That entrance up there is, I reckon, where cave divers and that go. Just there, that rope going down. I reckon they like kind of not abseil, but oh, there's a zip line, zip line down to here. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Love that. Love this as well. Okay then everybody, so that was the tour of Wookie Hole Caves. There is a bit more to this, but it was quite busy. There was like an amusement arcade, certain other things, so I decided not to film that. But the caves itself I thought were absolutely fantastic. They're more impressive than I actually remember. Like I said, last time I was here I was a kid. But yeah, it was just absolutely amazing. Um, I'd love to do a ghost hunt there, especially to do with that witch story and all that kind of stuff. I would absolutely love to do a ghost hunt in those caves. There is a vibe there. I didn't obviously say it in the video because I didn't want to, obviously because there's other people there. But um, but yeah, all in all, I thought it was absolutely amazing and I hope everybody enjoyed the video. So on that note, I hope everybody has a great rest of the day. Whatever you're doing, please take care and goodbye.